Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We'll be covering everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we'll be giving you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today we have a an unplanned show, um, quite impromptu, but something I just wanted to, we decided to touch on um, momentarily. So before we get into this video, please make sure you go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, as I just said, this show wasn't really planned. Oh, and by the way, if you're not following us on social media, please make sure you follow us on Instagram. Our handle is Dreamers Pro, <laughs> Dreamers Pro, and make sure you follow me also on my Instagram. It's uh, C Tabansi, C T A B A N Z. We also answer questions there. We actually produced a video just the other day from a message someone sent to us there. So make sure you, do, you go ahead and do that. But as, as I said, this video wasn't, this show wasn't really planned um i was actually wrapping up the research here for the day and i stumbled upon an article from espn about Kyrie irvin right and he it was, it's, it's a bit of a lengthy article i'm not going to read it as, in its entirety but Kyrie irvin gave some very candid information number one about the nets outlook going into this particular season number one and also he kind of you know reflected on what happened last year and some of the reasons that the team actually fell. And I think it's really good, right? That we actually get a chance to hear from one of the team leaders in Kyrie. Because whatever whether people believe it or not, Kyrie Irvin can be considered one of the leaders on the Brooklyn Nets. Whether you like it or not, he's one of their best players and he's going to need to lead because that team has to have um, you know, an established culture somehow, right? So Kyrie Irvin has to be one of the guys to set the tone alongside with uh, Kevin Durant and these guys. So um, we actually found this article from ESPN is a bit lengthy, but I definitely want to read some of it because I think a lot of you guys are going to get some good insight from it. It was written by uh, Nick Fredell. But before we get into this article here, this video is brought to you by sponsor Aura, who's also the official sponsor of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Do you know what the fastest growing crime in America is today? It's identity theft. Imagine trying to log into your email only to see that your password has been changed. Then you start getting weird notifications from your bank and credit cards only to find out that all of your personal and sensitive information has been totally compromised if you think it can happen to you and your family just know that in 2020 over 49 million americans were victims to identity theft costing them a combined 56 billion dollars that is why we are excited to partner with aura who's the sponsor of this video aura is the number one identity theft and financial fraud protection aura monitors the dark web and alerts you if any of your passwords and accounts have been breached and funny enough after using aura i discovered some of my credentials were floating around in the dark web and the app showed me exactly when and where the breach happened in addition Aura allows you to set spending alerts and they'll notify you of any suspicious transactions. Aura is four times faster than any of its competitors in alerting you if someone is trying to open a credit card or obtain a loan using your name. And remember this, every 14 seconds someone becomes a victim of identity fraud. Don't let it happen to you. Now click the link in the description and try Aura for free for two weeks and see if any of you or your family's personal information has been compromised. Start your free trial at Aura.com slash Dreamers Pro. And when you try Aura, by using the link in the description below also know that you're supporting this channel thank you so what i want to do is i want to get into this article here read a little bit and then we're going to come back and, and just react to it. so it says Kyrie irvin talks his future advising ben simmons and turning down a big payday the article continues on the vibe the vibes are good right now in Kyrie irvin's world as he stands inside the brooklyn nets locker room following wednesday's nice preseason against the milwaukee bucks irving lights up some sage from the side of the room and discusses his team and what he feels is a positive direction it's heading after dramatic and controversy filled summer he says tell you right now it extends all the way up Irvin told espn from owner josiah all the way to the 16th guy on the team we all can feel it because we all have a piece in our success and we all have a piece in when we fail so that accountability that we continue to hold for each other is definitely something that we're going to continue to build on and i think the results will speak for themselves it continues on when he was asked on media day you said that you could have signed that four-year extension worth 100 million dollars are you confident going into next year that if you play at the way you're capable of that contract will still be there at the end of the season whether it's from the nets or somebody else to that Kyrie Irvin responded well I'm staying patient and letting those things play out, honestly, because the best thing I can do right now is just build sustainable relationships and and be there for people that go on the court and off the court. And that's going to be a uh, unique task this year, eliminating those distractions and thinking about things that I know are either in the future or or they are not or hoping i don't want to be in that phase i just want to be present live every day as god has given it to me and legitimately just have fun with the uh, with this profession 
it's a heck of a business, ain't it? Then another question uh, was asked um, as it pertains to last year. He says, the question is, do you have any regrets as you look back on last year about anything? To that, Irvin replied, I'll be lying to you as a human being if I said I didn't. I think we all think about times we could have been, made better decisions and times we wish we could have done things differently. And I feel the same way at times throughout my life. I legitimately just want to play the long game and not put too much pressure on myself or the people that I'm around. This is something that I <laughs> that I get to every day. We say it as a cliche sometimes, but nah. We just left. We just let the play handle itself. Enjoy the season, and then after that, we'll go back and look at some of this and reflect uh, some of this reflection time, and talk about these things in deeper detail. But as of right now, that can't be my uh, focus. And then another question was, what is it like having it back again on full time on a full time basis? Irvin said, I don't. I don't ever leave it. Laughs. I don't ever leave it. I go everywhere with it. So. You heard what Kyrie Irvin had to say there. Let me first of all say this. That was beautifully said. Beautifully, beautifully said by Kyrie Irvin. Beautifully said, right? Um, coherent, straightforward, uh, quite poetic in a way, but it was beautifully said. That's the first thing. The second thing I want to focus on. So, and by the way, we're getting this article from ESPN.com if, uh, if, I, if, I, if I haven't already mentioned that he spoke about the importance of accountability i think that's a i think that's a very very important right and he talked about from the from the organization from the head up all the way down to the 16th man on the bench i also believe in that as well because in order for teams to be successful you need guys in the in, in you know in the front office doing their jobs properly and you need guys on the court holding themselves accountable um you know building the right habits doing the right thing so those two departments, so to speak, need to be working together. On, they need to be in lockstep, right? So I totally agree with what he said um, there. I also like the fact about him staying present, being present minded, not thinking too far in the future, not thinking too much in the past or being in the moment, right? Don't think about the big picture. Focus on that day and what you need to do that day. Obviously, have a have a vision of where you want to be, have a goal, but just keep that goal there. But don't let that be something you're reflecting on every day, because what's most important is the work you put in on, on a daily basis. I thought that was also a powerful statement that he put out there. And finally, to his last point about looking back last year, the fact of the matter is this, as he said, we all make mistakes unless, of course, you know, you just you just you just you have a, you know, this convoluted way of looking at yourself. We all make mistakes. We all can go back and look at things that we've done wrong and say, hey, if I had an opportunity, I would have done that twice. That's just wisdom. We all make mistakes. If I, I wish I wouldn't have said that. I wish I would have done it that way. So I thought what he said there was absolutely brilliant and I thought it was honest, right? He wasn't there talking like as if, no, 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 from a self-righteous thing. He's like, no, listen, we're all human beings. So Based off of what Kyrie Irving said, from what I was able to read and glean from this article here, it seems to me that he has the right mind state. Now, it's worth mentioning this. Words are beautiful. Actions are magnificent. So ultimately, what's going to really matter is what you do, not so much what you say. You can have the right, right mind state and all of that stuff, but you still need to go out there and put out the work. And to me, based on what he says, it seems as if it seems as if that Kyrie Irving has a laser focus on this season, and that's good. I just hope that his teammates also have that. I also hope that his coaching staff and all of these guys are operating on the same wave wavelength, and these guys are actually improving and looking to get better as the season go uh, goes on. So I thought that was um, uh, you know beautifully said. So what I want to know from you guys is this. What do you think about what Kyrie Irving had to say, and what are your expectations about the Brooklyn Nets going into this season? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section, and we catch you guys on the next episode. Peace.